Hello, this short video will help you make the most of the formula book in your A-level math statistics paper. Let's start with discrete distributions. If a random variable x follows a binomial distribution with n trials and probability of success p, we have the probability that x takes a particular value, ncx p to the x times 1 minus p to the n minus x, the mean of the distribution is n times p, and the variance is np times 1 minus p. Let's look at an example. A drill bit manufacturer claims that 52% of its bits last longer than 40 hours. A random sample of 30 bits is taken, and x lasts longer than 40 hours. This means that x will follow a binomial distribution, 30 trials, with probability of success 0.52. We're asked to find the probability that x is less than 17. The probability that x is less than 17 will be the probability that x is less than or equal to 16. This is because we have a discrete distribution. When we use our calculator, the cumulative distribution is based on calculating the probability that x is less than or equal to some bound. This equals 0 0.6277. Now we're told a second random sample of 600 drill bits is taken. Let's say the number of bits lasting longer than 40 hours is y. So in this case, y has a binomial distribution, 600 trials, a probability of success of 0 0.52. The mean of this distribution, NP, will be 600 times 0 0.52, or 312. And the variance, we can calculate using NP times 1 minus P to be 149.76. The standard deviation is the square root of this value, or 12.24. Part B says using a suitable approximation, find the probability that between 300 and 350 bits last longer than 40 hours. As n is large, 600, and the probability of success, 0 0.52, is close to 0 0.5, we can make a reasonable approximation to a normal distribution with the same mean and standard deviation. So a random variable z with a normal distribution of mean 312 and variance 12.24 squared will be a suitable approximation. We're asked to use this approximation to find the probability that between 300 and 350 bits will last longer than 40 hours. Don't forget, as z is a continuous distribution, we have to use a continuity correction. This means we need to calculate the probability that z lies between 299.5 and 350.5. On our calculator, this turns out to be 0 0.8456. Next, we have a formula relating to sampling distributions. We're told for a random sample of n observations from a normally distributed random variable x, with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, x bar minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of n will be a normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one. I think it's more easily understood in this form, which says that the distribution of the means of these samples will be a normal distribution the mean of the means will still be mu, but the standard deviation of the means will be sigma over the square root of n. Let's look at an example. A random sample of size n is to be taken from a population that is normally distributed with mean 40 and standard deviation 3. Find the minimum sample size such that the probability of the sample mean being greater than 42 is less than 5%. So we're given a random variable x, which is normally distributed with mean 40 and standard deviation 3. From this, we take a sample, size n, and the mean of this sample will be normally distributed with mean 40 and variance s squared, where s equals 3 divided by root n. 
That's the sigma of the original distribution divided by the square root of the sample size. Here's a picture of it. Here's our main 40. We're asked to find the minimum sample size such that the probability of the sample mean being greater than 42 is less than 5%. So if we mark 42 on our diagram here, the area of the tail has got to be less than 0 0.05. Looking at the standard distribution with a mean zero, we can calculate using the tables in the formula book or a calculator that to have an area of 0 0.05 on the right hand tail we must be 1.65 standard deviations from the mean. So that tells us in this case, 42 minus 40 has got to be greater than 1.65 times the standard deviation 3 over root n. Rearranging this inequality gives us that n must be greater than 6.13. And as the sample size must be a whole number, it tells us that n must be greater than or equal to 7. So that the minimum sample size, such that the probability of the sample mean being greater than 42 is less than 5%, will be 7. Let's look at one more example. Daily mean wind speed is modelled as being normally distributed with a standard deviation of 3.1 knots. A random sample of 25 recorded daily mean wind speeds is taken at Heathrow in 2015. Given that the mean of the sample is 12.2 knots, test at the 2.5% level of significance whether the mean of the daily mean wind speeds is greater than 9.5 knots. State your hypotheses clearly. So the null hypothesis will be that mu equals 9.5. This allows us to model the daily mean wind speed as a normal distribution with mean of 9.5 knots and standard deviation of 3.1. The alternate hypothesis in this case is that mu is greater than 9.5. So we'll be doing a one-tailed test. When samples of size 25 are taken from these wind speeds, the mean of those samples will have a standard deviation of 3.5 divided by the square root of 25, the sample size. So the standard deviation of the means in these samples would be 0 0.62. That means that the distribution of means of samples would be normally distributed with a mean of 9.5 and a standard deviation of 0 0.62. Looking at the standard distribution, looking at the standard distribution, we can calculate that the 2.5% level of significance appears at 1.96 standard deviations from the mean. Given that the mean of the sample we've taken is 12.2 knots, this represents 12.2 minus 9.5 divided by 0 0.62 equals 4.355 standard deviations from the mean. So this is beyond the 1.96 standard deviations required for the 2.5 level of significance. Therefore, there is evidence at the 2.5 significance level that the mean wind speed is greater than 9.5 knots. That's all for this video. I hope it was useful and that you'll take a look at the other videos in this series. Goodbye.